All right, good afternoon. Uh, first off, uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out here today and to all of the people that are being inducted today. Like Mark said earlier, welcome home. For some of you, like Mr. Tayani, he never left. And as a matter of fact, he was probably in this building last night making sure everything was clean here. So, um, But all of you now are going to be forever linked together as an inductee class and go down in history as being together as this class, uh, honoring your accomplishments as athletes. But more importantly, we want to thank you for being an inspiration for students today and hundreds of students down the road as they look at the plaques and they see what you did on the field, off the field, and what you've done beyond that. So on behalf of the Board of Education, we want to say congratulations to you and thank you for serving as an inspiration for the future Colonials who will look up to you guys for what you did in the past. So give yourselves a big round of applause. Thank you. I would also want to thank the Alumni Association who put this all together. They did a fantastic job and uh, they deserve a big round of applause as well. I do want to recognize some of my uh, fellow board members that are here today uh, who came out to recognize uh, this great event and help support it. Uh, our newest trustee, April Coppola. April. Another trustee, Mr. Anthony Sparuda. Anthony. Anthony's extremely tan because he spends most of his time down south, and we wondered why he was up here with 25 degree weather, but thank you for coming up. And of course, Mr. Bob Guerriero. Bob? Also want to thank our uh, new superintendent of schools. He's actually not new. He's kind of no longer the rookie. This is his second year, but he's done a phenomenal job as superintendent, Mr. Kevin Coster. So once again, thank you. Congratulations. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. And it's with my great pleasure that I introduce the legislator from the Suffolk County uh, Legislature for the 3rd District, Suffolk County Legislator Kate Browning. I can make this short, but I just want to say congratulations to all the inductees. And I do have certificates that you'll all receive. Um, you know, it's, we do have an amazing sports program. And I didn't grow up here, but it's amazing how many of you I do know. I mean, the Keneally's are here. I, I know the Barnes family and Mary. I have known you how long. Um, so yeah, I am here just for you, just so you know. <laughs> we were joking about that earlier. And, you know, we do have an awesome sport, sports program, so it's great to honor all of our past uh, sports heroes, stars from our school district. And, you know, I'm looking at the Barones. Who doesn't know the Barones in wrestling, right? I remember those days. Um, but again, uh, it, it is good to honor and remember and recognize all of our former students and uh, someone that all of our kids can look up to, because I know when my kids were here and in sports, we'd be in the room and they'd be looking at the names and the banners of, you know, the different years when they won state championships and county championships, and it is something for them to look up to. Um, so when I see Mr. Phelan here, awesome, awesome guy. So thank you for being here. But uh, again, well-deserved, enjoy your day. And congratulations. Thank you very much, Kate. And Kate does a great job. Really, um, uh, every now and then she'll call the office with an opportunity for us to apply for a grant or ask us about for a program like Relay for Life or Special Olympics. And she steps up to the plate every time and really helps our department. So, again, Kate, thank you so much for all that you do for us. Uh, next, I'd like to bring up uh, our new, uh, well, second year now, our new superintendent of schools, Mr. Kevin Cobb. I'd uh, just like to recognize uh, several people and several groups here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to recognize Board of Ed Trustee Robert Tiani, who will be inducted today as a football player into our athletic program. <laughs> I'd also like to recognize two past board members who devoted countless hours, years, to make this school district great. 
Mr. Mark Matthews. And our current athletic director, Mr. Mark Mensch. So today is a record-breaking day for us, a record-breaking day in the number of individuals that are here to recognize this 10th incoming Athletic Hall of Fame class. And you may not know it, but many people that are sitting here are current and past employees, teachers, administrators, coaches, teaching assistants, who came out on Saturday to support the William Floyd community and our athletes. So I'd like to just give you a round of applause for coming out. Thank you. Because without you, none of this would be possible. We are a Floyd Strong organization here. And one thing that a strong and intelligent organization does is recognize and celebrate its past accomplishments. You also learn from your past mistakes as well. And today, it is my pleasure to be a part of inducting this latest class into our Athletic Hall of Fame. Legacy is something that's spoken about often in the press, in news outlets, even debates about which football team was the best? Could the 07 team beat the 03 team? Could Coach Hodgson's first county championship team beat this one? Could this wrestler beat this wrestler? It's something that's heavily debated over and over again. But the one thing about legacy is it's permanent. These athletes today, the community organization today, the county championship team today that's being inducted is a permanent part of the history of the Wayne Floyd School District. It can't be debated. Their names will be outside of the gym, joining nine other plaques. And having the privilege of walking through the high school on a daily basis, I will tell you that not a day goes by when you don't see a student looking at those plaques, or a faculty member, or a security guard. It's a permanent part of celebrating your accomplishments. And you should feel really good about that. Because as much that you gave to us with your accomplishments is as much that you gave back to this community. And I have to tell you, this is one of my favorite events of the year, and I'm extremely proud to be a part of it. You are the definition of being Floyd Strong. This day is for you. This day is for you to celebrate your accomplishments and to be forever recognized as a part of the William Floyd School community. Congratulations and enjoy. Thank you. Listen, you're never going to be as good as I am. 
but you'll definitely be better than Nick Schroeder. So that made it easy. I knew exactly where I was going to fall in, um, and I moved on from there. And uh, his wife, Madonna Pinto, who was a longtime nurse here, retired at the same time. They are very, very important to the Wee Floyd community. They, grew, they, they just gave back all the time. And to see her today, uh, Madonna, where are you? Thanks for coming today. It's great. <laughs> I'd like to bring up our president of our alumni association, Ms. Jackie Plesky. Okay, a couple uh, of our uh, Hall of Famers are here today. Just don't move much. Is that it? Um, so we'd like to uh, recognize, recognize them. That when you get to over to the gym, as I said, we're going to give the tour. And then when we end up over there, you're going to see a few of our uh, Hall of Famers over there. One would be Phil Archer, uh, coach who's over there. So once you get over there, you'll see him. He's here today. Uh, we also have Brian Baps. Brian? Brian was running down the hall. He's running down the hall, so... When he gets back, Hall of Famer Brian Bapst, okay, we have also Mr. Joe Barone, who's our tournament director, so you'll see him there, uh, very official, like, he doesn't smile much, but, you know, he'll be there. We also have uh, Bill Hennessy, who played with me, sophomore. Bill, congrats. Uh, we have Robin Hodgson, who hopefully uh, might be back, he's our head basketball coach now, he's a former alumni, played at Rutgers University. Uh, 
Um, and hopefully they'll be back there on a trip right now, so you might get to see him later on. We have Mary Beth Hoffman. Mary Beth. You also, when you get to the gym, see Coach Mecca. Anthony Mecca is a Hall of Famer, and he's also our head varsity best, uh, wrestling coach. You'll see him there. Um, and stopping by hopefully later on, because he was working this morning, I saw him, he said he didn't come here, it was George Mundy. George owns Pizza Time down at Neighborhood Road. He's going to try to come up here this afternoon, so you might get to see him. And from our coaches, we have Coach Fallon. Coach Dan Nolan. Yeah. So uh, it's great having everybody come back. That was when I started this. One of the things, uh, the vision I had was I was fortunate enough to go to Gettysburg College. Um, and when I went to the Hall of Fame ceremony there, I saw how many people came back every year. And I said, if we could ever get to that point in Floyd where we had people who were inductees that would come back and tell their stories and be there to celebrate people coming in, and now we're here. I mean, 10 years ago when I started this, we had a barbecue at a football game, and it was like 25 people, and then it became 50 people. And, so, and now it's, it's like sellout only. So uh, thanks so much for coming back and supporting us and supporting our uh, new inductees. So first up, our uh, first group that we're going to recognize is going to be for our team award. And when I was putting this together, one of the things I wanted to do is, uh, starting with last year's team, which was a basketball team, championship team that we had, uh, we're, we're focusing the next 10 years uh, in the athletic department on our female athletes and our female athletic program. And we really want to get to the point where our female athletes are, you know, at the top of the game throughout the county. And, and the girls' tennis team was the first thing to kind of start to get this going in that direction, step in here. Uh, but there were a lot of people who were the groundbreakers, the ones who, during the 70s and 80s, when we were on split sessions and, and we didn't have a lot of resources and our uniforms didn't match. Uh, you know, they, we, we, we kind of laid the groundwork, and this group of young ladies, they were the ones that started a run of county championships in cross country that's unprecedented throughout the county. Um, and it started in the early 70s, carried into a couple league championships, and then this 86 team was the one that went right to the top and took the county championship, and then we went on a run that was pretty incredible. And it was a lot of, because of Coach LaBianca, and, and uh, Coach Ganliata and the work that they put into you guys. Um, so it was really an honor and it was an easy choice for me to bring you back. So uh, without further ado, we'd like to bring up uh, Mary Clover. Yay! And just stay here, we'll get you up. First one, you have to stand by yourself. Thanks. <laughs> Maureen Curtin. Martinelli. <laughs> Karine Campbell. <laughs> Christine Trochiola. Send us letters. 
every week we would get letters from Coach giving us encouragement, ideas, things that we could do, things that we could try. And Karen, they could have saved so many of these. We've got an entire book full of them. But there's just one that I wanted to share. This is from June of the, the summer before we won counties. Uh, just a letter to say hello. Our season starts in the summer. When you receive this letter, our first Wednesday group run, run would have passed. I hope that you make these runs was to get to know each other better because the 85 team was almost mostly seniors, so we were bringing up, I mean, we have two freshmen on this team, sophomore, junior, and then a couple of seniors. So, I mean, we were a brand new group of people that were trying to learn how to be a team in what is largely an individual sport. Uh, so he wants the veterans to help the 8th, 9th, and 10th graders feel at home, run with them at least part of the way. I'll send a list of all the runners. If everyone comes out, we'll have a big team, and both teams will have championship ability. Run the miles every day. Combine running and swimming. Who's lost our cross train? It's the 80s. No cross train. Um, run at the beach. Run in the deep sand. Run as much as you can. I'm going to ask the leaders to keep an eye on the youngsters. And that's what we did. Um, and uh, I know I can say that I am here on the coattails of most of the youngsters, because they were way better runners than I was. Um, but it was because of the coaches, and they brought us together, even in the off season, to make us a team, to make us a family. And it wasn't just the girls' team that brought us to counties, it was the boys' team too. Because we ran the meets at the same time, on the same days, well, not exactly the same time, but on the same days. So when we were running, the guys were all on the course cheering us on, we scattered all over the place. So at the hardest part of the course, you had someone tell you, go now, you can do this. You know, you got. 100 more yards, kick it in, you're halfway there. So we were always there for each other. When the boys ran, we did it for them too. So it really is a group effort, a team effort, that brought us here. So not only do we want to say thank you to everyone here, and I wish the coaches were here so we could thank them as well, but it is because of them that we are here. Thank you. somebody that you think fits in. We have a community award. So when you look at the groups that are in there, you have the UMAS and, and Lynn Betts, Joseph Darris that was involved with that organization and, and, and aligning it to uh, our football program, that were, you know, they're outside the line. They're before we even get into school. Um, but, you know, the one thing you realize, I realize, you know, an athlete growing up with that, you don't get to the next level and accomplish all these things without a lot of people doing a lot of work that started when you were four and five years old. And uh, this year's organization is very much like that. Um, my son played uh, in the Mastic Sports uh, Soccer organization growing up. Um, from the, I think we started at the age five and, and went all the way through. And um, they were a great, uh, well-run organization. It was great for a lot of kids. Uh, I think my son learned a lot of things there, which uh, 
led on to him being uh, an Olympic hopeful. And uh, it was just a great experience. And part of that organization that branched out was an organization that started a soccer tournament here at William Floyd that really reached out to other communities, Longwood and Belfort and Santa Riches. And now, if you came here the first weekend in August, you wouldn't see a stitch of grass anywhere in the 48 acres that we have that didn't have a soccer field on it. And for three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and the hottest days of August, these people run a tournament that's second to none. And they have raised over half a million dollars in scholarship money that's gone back to soccer players that leave William Floyd and go on to the next level in college. So I couldn't, I couldn't be successful. You look at our soccer program now and where it is, and we put a lot of work into it. This year, for the first time in William Floyd history, we had both the girls' soccer team and boys' soccer team in the county playoffs. First time ever. And that's because of the work that this organization does. So if I could, we're going to bring these guys up uh, by name. David Zone. John Morgado. Valerie Morgado. Rose Broad. And Robert Zegger. Now that he's been back there 10 minutes thinking about what he's going to say, Rob and Zach. <laughs> Perfect. I know it's hot to hear in the back. So thank you for this opportunity. Come up and speak. Yes, well. Wait, wait, wait. All right. I'll try to scream for the people in the back. Hey, Rose. I really would like to thank the school for allowing us and giving us this opportunity to get this award because it's really something that matters in a community. You see all the people that get involved. It's not just the group you see here. There are tens and 20, 30, 40, 50 people that get involved and join this soccer tournament. It's the first full weekend in August, Is it? in case you'd like to show up. <laughs> so we get a lot of volunteers, but the group here, I want to give them another round of applause because without this group, we would not be having our 23rd annual tournament. We've been doing this for 22 years. Instead of giving a history of the tournament, which you can see in the program guide, I'll just give you a brief snapshot of what it looks like going into the 23rd year. So to date, we have raised close to three quarters of a million dollars that we've given to kids to go to college that are graduating high school. Again, we've done that with a couple of other schools, namely Longwood, but over the past couple of years, we are now doing this as Mastic Sports Club, an East End soccer tournament, where all the scholarships will go to William Floyd graduating students when we start it. <laughs> this year, during the scholarship night, when is it, in May? Uh, it's usually end of May. Yeah. End of May. Uh, the tournament we'll be giving away from last year's 2016 tournament, $10,000 to graduating students. So we hope to get a lot of people applying for that. It used to be to, to get an award that you had to be a soccer player for Mastic Sports Club. We took that away. What we try to do now is say, if you get involved in your community and community service, you're eligible to receive the scholarship. If you do work or, or you volunteer for Mastic Sports Club, even if you come down and do volunteer work for the tournament, you can become eligible. So you do not have to play for the sports club any longer. Just get involved in the community. And that's what this is all about. At any one time, when you don't see a stitch of grass, <laughs> I can tell you we have, it varies on a year, but we have an average of 15 soccer fields going off at the same time. And out of those 15 soccer fields, you have two teams, which, 
let's say on an average there's 15 kids on a team. So at any one given moment, there are about 450 kids playing soccer. Then they get a break. And an hour break, there's another 450 kids playing soccer. So this goes on from 8 in the morning until 6 at night when they play. We're there from about 5.30 in the morning until about 8.30 at night to make sure it goes off smooth. But what happens when you have those 900 kids between the two time slots, we get about three to 4,000 mothers, fathers, siblings, grandparents, aunts, uncles that are down at these fields watching their kids play soccer. And this is what's important because not every time Master Shirley William Floyd is seen in a positive light. And this tournament, not only giving away scholarships, there's also a window in for what this community provides. Because we get three, 4,000 people there, and I can't tell you how many times I hear multiple people saying, wow, look at this complex. Look at this. We never knew this was out here. And to have so many people come out and see this community and see this William Floyd complex, it's absolutely amazing. So that's another thing we're proud to have the people come out and Thank you, William Floyd, for allowing us to use the fields once a year. And we do try hard to make sure it's clean after thousands and thousands <laughs> of people. And I'd also like to thank all the recipients for this year's award. Congratulations. Thank you. Check one, two, whoa, that's a good, absolutely, big difference. Okay, so now moving on to our individual inductees. Uh, to do the introductions for this part, you don't get to listen to me, which is, you're probably tired of that by now. So we've got some students who are current student athletes here who are going to be introducing our inductees as they come into the Hall of Fame. Our first in, uh, introduction or a student athlete is going to come up. The quarterback of our football team, which just won the county championship this past fall, um, and that is Mr. Robert Tajani. <laughs> Junior. to be here today to present one of the inductees of the 10th class of the William Floyd Athletic Hall of Fame, my father and one of my first football coaches, Robert Tiani, class of 1991, who is being inducted for his accomplishments on, in football. During his time at William Floyd, Robert was a two-sport athlete competing in track and football. He excelled on the gridiron for the Colonials varsity football team, earning all league in all county accolades as a senior, a year in which he notched 14 and a half quarterback sacks in an eight game season, breaking the previous team record 
and helping the Colonials qualify for the postseason for the first time in program history. He had several multiple sack performances in games, including those against Longwood and Brentwood. After graduation, Rob attended Wagner College and played football for the Seahawks for one season before transferring to SUNY Cortland, where he earned his degree in economics and management. After college, he played four years of semi-pro football with the Suffolk County Tomahawks in the Garden State Football League. Rob currently serves as a Port Authority of New York and New Jersey Emergency Services Unit Officer assigned to the World Trade Center. He resides in Merchants, New York with my mother, his wife, Lisa, and their four children, including myself, Robert, and my brothers, Nicholas, Matthew, and Mason. privilege to be here today. Uh, it makes it even more special to be introduced by your son. Um, in high school, I didn't like quarterbacks much, <laughs> but now you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who would support them more than I do. I'd like to thank the Wayne Floyd School District, uh, Wayne Floyd Alumni Association, as well as the Athletic Hall of Fl uh, Fame Selection Committee for this great honor, and apparently Mark Mitch. <laughs> I would also like to thank my family, including my wife, Lisa, our four boys, um, my high school teammates, which there are a few around, if you want to raise your hand and admit to something like that. <laughs> uh, my close friends are here also, and uh, some of the coaches along the way, some of whom are here today, and I'd like to point them out. Coach Paul Longo, I had you um, eighth grade, I believe, right? Uh, all those undefeated teams. Uh, coach Kazax, right there in the middle, he was my uh, junior varsity head coach. Coach Hennessy, he's here as well. Uh, I had you ninth grade, I believe, with Coach Slavic. Coach Ronnie Gross, you are uh, one of the best coaches I've ever had. I had a lot of fun with you on my, during my varsity years. Uh, each of these coaches have taught me many valuable lessons along the way, lessons that I've tried to pass on to the young athletes that I have the privilege to coach. They're also here as well. Um, you guys want to stand up? All the boys standing right there basically have been just crowned Suffolk County champions for the 2016 uh, season. I also have the privilege to coach a group of young boys in the back. They're my 12-year-old group. They can stand up as well. <laughs> These young boys have won uh, two county championships in uh, Linbet PAL system and two Long Island championships who play indoor in the winter. So they actually, all, and this, this group here has three uh, Long Island championships as well, the boys for varsity team. Uh, one of the greatest accompli accomplishments and memories that I've had as a Colonial would be the battle between Connecticut and Floyd, which uh, Mr. Kelman and I were just speaking about prior to this. Um, it was the last game of the season, I believe. Um, Connecticut was the best team in the league that year and eventually went on to win the county championship in the Rutgers Cup. In order for Floyd to qualify for the postseason, we had to either win it or tie. I remember that game vividly, getting in the trenches with my teammates, and against all odds, we finished in a 9-9 tie and went on to the playoffs for the first time ever in our school's program. So we've come a long way since 1989 just qualifying for the playoffs, so actually winning 10, 10 county championships in 15 years and five Long Island championships, which is crazy to even think about. As great Coach Lombardi once said, football is a great deal like life in that it teaches that work, sacrifice, perseverance, competitive drive, respect for authority, and selflessness is the pride that each and every one of us must pay to achieve any goal that's worthwhile. That is what it means to be a Wayne Floyd Colonial student athlete. Again, I'm extremely honored and humbled to be recognized today, and um, I just want to thank you all for having me. Thank you so much.
Uh, our next student athlete that we'll be introducing, our next inductee, is our baseball captain, so this is very appropriate, Mr. Robert Frost. How are you doing today? It's an honor to be here. Um, known to opponents as the Floyd Flash, Tom Banducci was consistently pitching his fastball in the 90 mile an hour range during his time in the Colonial Varsity Baseball team. Throughout his high school career, Tom amassed a record of 20, 20 wins and 5 losses, and had an ERA of 1.20 and had 245 strikeouts and only 189 innings pitched. He was selected to the Suffolk County All-Star team in both his junior and senior year, and was All-County as a senior, as selected by the Suffolk Baseball Coach Association. Tom also recorded two no-hitters and had a one-hitter. He was scouted by several major league teams and drafted by the LA Dodgers in the 22nd round of the 1978 amateur draft. He was the first player to be drafted by a professional baseball team in William Floyd history. So congratulations, Tom Manducci. I'd like to thank everybody for coming this afternoon. I'd like to thank William Floyd and the Alumni Association for the selection. Uh, through my career at Floyd, you know, you run into a lot of great coaches, uh, dedicated staff, great support from the community, great support from the school. Uh, there's nothing like the teammates you make to help you with your personal decisions, people to talk to, and just really help you throughout your whole career. Uh, the coaches we had, unlimited amount of time that they put in with us and just constantly giving you positive recognition. Uh, I, can't, I can't thank the coaches enough. I can't thank my family enough for the support uh, throughout the years. Uh, it was, it's a great honor to be honored here today, but it was also my honor to pitch for this great school. To introduce our next honoree, we have, pretty impressive here, class president, captain of the volleyball team, captain of the girls lacrosse team, Alexi Willits. Former athletic director John Pigeon was quoted as saying, Bernadette was one of the most accomplished female athletes within the first 25 years of William Floyd High School sports. Bernadette's career saw her excel in the sport athlete earning multiple honors in field hockey, basketball, and softball. By the time she was a senior, she earned all county, all Long Island, and all state honors in softball, all league, all conference, and all county honors in field hockey, and there's more, all league in basketball as well. After graduation, Bernadette accepted a full-ride scholarship to play softball and attended Quinnipiac University in Connecticut, while she earned a degree in physical therapy before competing externships in sports medicine and acute rehab at John Hopkins University, Yale University, and the University of Florida. She's been a physical therapist for 21 years and currently works for Hartford Hospital in the Home Care Division, where she specializes in acute therapy. She resides in Winster, Connecticut with her two beautiful children, Faith and Joey Bradley. Congratulations.
First, I would like to thank William Floyd and Mr. Mark Mensch for the honor of being inducted today. When I was notified a few months ago of this distinction, I was very excited and honored. I feel my years as a William Floyd athlete have been very valuable. I've had the opportunity to work with some outstanding, motivated and supportive coaches, as well as the pleasure of knowing and being supported by an outstanding athletic director, Mr. John Pigeon. I was very sad a few years ago to hear of his early passing with such a wonderful man. He was an athletic director, like I am sure Mr. Mench is today, of course, that was highly supportive and encouraging with not only the boys' sports programs, but the girls' programs as well. I remember my high school years seeing him in the office or the hallways and going out of his way to encourage and support me on a loss and or congratulate me for a good win. He was a man who made sure that in the 80s and 90s that the girls' sport programs were just as valuable as the boys. I would also like to thank a very special coach and person, Mr. Joe Hurley. I met Mr. Hurley in seventh grade on the softball field. It was at that time he took me under his wing, teaching me to pitch, inspiring me to never give up and to always work hard no matter what. For six years I pitched for William Floyd. He selflessly dedicated his whole school year and summers working tirelessly with me and others without pay to make us better and to make the William Floyd High School softball team one of the best. He even went as far as to go to camps to learn more to make us better pitchers. Mr. Hilly helped prepare me not only on the mound, but inspired me to be a good person and always reach for the stars. I'm so proud to have had the opportunity to have known him and he'd be part of my life. I would like to thank my mother, father, my grandma Alice for all their support. My mom attended every game for every sport over my career, never missing a home or away game year after year, enduring all types of weather. As a working mother like, my, like, like I am, like my mom was, I am so much more appreciative today the effort and support and dedication she had given me all of my life through all my years of sports, no matter how busy her life was. My mom was not only supportive of being a fan at my games, but emotionally offered me and my sister genuine encouragement at all times, putting up with the good and bad days of an athlete. And I thank her for always being an inspiration to me. To my sister Mary, who let me add was inducted into the Hall of Fame last year, was, I thank you for always being competitive, but at the same time, a supportive sister on and off the field. My sister and I played all the same sports all three seasons together, only being one year apart in school. Luckily, I always played offense and her defense. She completed the battery in softball, I being the pitcher and her the catcher, which was so special. You are a great athlete, and like sisters, you kept me competitive and always kept the fire burning while always being in my corner. Today, you continue the battle. <laughs> Sorry. The greatest challenge of your life, stage four pancreatic cancer. But like a great athlete, you are a competitor and you continue to win in the game of life and continue to live. I feel so blessed you are here with us still today. Thank you to all my friends and family and my boyfriend Peter and son Lee that you're here to support me today. They continue to support me throughout my life. I could not have asked for a better and loving family to my children, Joe and Faith, thank you so much for being so proud of me today for receiving this award. Always know that my mom and family, like my mom and family was to me, I will always be your best support, number one fan, and greatest encouragement in all your sports and endeavors. Thank you.
uh, Bernadette had said there's so many uh, great coaches that influenced us um, as athletes growing up. And um, part of, of the next inductee, I want to make sure I recognize uh, one of those gentlemen that's here. To think back now, I mean, we're so successful in football now. Um, but in 1980, the end of my, se my junior year, uh, the Board of Education here at William Floyd was actually considering stopping or discontinuing the football program here at William Floyd. Which, when you look at how successful we are now, it's hard to believe that we were act actually at uh, that very, very dark day. Um, and I was fortunate enough, my dad, um, John Mensch, and Bill Clancy's dad uh, went to the board and worked with them to say, listen, why don't we make some changes and maybe turn the program around? Um, and the gentleman that they brought in to make that happen was not only my coach, but the coach for Lance Brown. And he really set the program on, in the right direction, uh, was then taken over by Mr. C uh, coach Katia and then finally Coach Longo. Um, but I really think that he was the one who came in here. And I can tell you, being one of his athletes, one of his captains, taught me a lot about, you know, facing adversity like that and, and learning how to be a winner. And we had to learn how to win again. And he did that here. So I want to congratulate and thank you for being here, Coach Schroeder. And now to bring up uh, or introduce uh, Lance Brown, once again we have Mr. Robert Cross. Thank you, Ian. Lance Brown was an excellent student who excelled both on the football field and on the track. In football, he earned all league honors as a junior tight end, as well as all league honorable mention during his senior year as a fullback. He forged a reputation as both an excellent blocker and receiver. He scored two key touchdowns in games against Longwood, Bayshore, Smithtown East, and Smithtown West, which helped pave the way for William Floyd to post its first winning season in four years. In track, Lance started as a four-year varsity letterman in the 440 hurdles and the 110 high hurdles. He was the winner of multiple invitation, invitational events throughout his high school career. During his senior year, he was just one second off the pace of the school 440 hurdle record. After graduation, Lance attended SUNY Farmingdale and then transferred to Stony Brook, where he played football for the Seawolves. Lance currently is an assistant defensive coach for Panther Creek High School in North Carolina and has been for the past four years. Panther Creek was co-conference champions in 2014 and has made the playoffs in three of his four years coaching. Lance is a retired Nassau County Police Sergeant and is currently a corporal with the Duke University Police Department. He is also a 32-year member of the U.S. Army Reserves currently serving as a battalion commander. Congratulations, Mr. Lance Brown. I had a speech uh, prepared, and I don't use a mic, I got a big mouth, my wife will test it. So I, won't, I won't use a mic, but uh, I did have a speech, but I scrapped that. Um, I kind of try and talk off the cuff, but I do want to thank Mr. Mensch, uh, the Board of Education, uh, the superintendent, former teachers, students, both past and present, uh, for this great event. Um, it truly is something to come back to the school and reconnect with teachers. Um, my former coach, Nick Schroeder, Dan Nolan, uh, Mr. Labianck, who's not here with us today, but uh, all three of them were a great inspiration in my life. Um, I don't think we realize that going to high school, going to school, elementary school, and so forth, of course, is a big part of our life, but how much athletics equally contributes to what we are as people and how we grow and learn. Um, I know it was certainly a defining moment in my life. I have a lot to uh, be thankful for with athletics, uh, football, track, uh, what, for me, what it did for me in my life and bring me to where I am today. Um, I don't think that without athletics, um, I would have turned out to be the person I am because of the friendship I forged, uh, the mentorship I received from my coaches, uh, from my fellow students, my teammates, uh, the lifelong friends I made from it. Uh, I think we all can attest to that by everybody who's here today, by the forged friendships we've made, the reconnections, and just how important athletics are. And these programs that high schools present to us and having the Hall of Fame for the athletics, academia, and the other things that we do in terms of bringing back our alumni. It's very important. Um, I had the opportunity, Mr. Mench gave me the opportunity yesterday to speak with the future leaders. Um, and I, I can tell you, it, it was very enjoyable to me. 
Um, again, I kind of thought, did it off the cuff, I wasn't really prepared, I didn't have an agenda, but once you get to talk to students and give them your experiences and the challenges that you went through uh, to these young students and reconnect with them, you kind of see the connection that alumni and the Hall of Fame and what it does for our young students, our, our young leaders, um, uh, the people who are going to forge uh, the future of, of our great country. It really makes a huge difference. And doing these kind of things is so vitally important to help our young people to understand what we came from, the challenges that we had. Uh, and, and being part of athletics is vitally important to the social growth of our young children. So having that opportunity and being an alumnus and, and, and an athlete, if you will, and having our young people understand that both academia and athletics forges the people that are going to be, the foundation they're going to be, the, the, uh, as I talked yesterday, uh, the ethos, the Army ethos, the seven of them um, that I live by, and uh, our young people, and Mark um, has three of them, we talked about them yesterday, those, those character builders that our young people forge, and they get that through athletics. Um, so I'm thankful for that, uh, and I'm thankful for being part of this great event today. Again, I thank everybody here. Uh, I thank the great conversations that we've been having back there uh, about our experiences. I'm thankful for the young people that I got a, talk, a chance to talk to yesterday. So thank you very much. I'm honored to be here. I certainly don't, I'm humbled. I don't feel that I'm deserving this, of this award, but I am humble and thankful. Uh, and I thank each and every one of you for, uh, for having me today. And I hope to speak to many of you as we continue today's event. So thank you very much, and, and God bless you. about all the great catches he made. We didn't tell you about the two he dropped, but that's, we'll leave that out for later. <laughs> uh, for our next inductee, uh, and to introduce uh, Mr. McNeely, we're going to bring up Lexi Bullets. competing in cross country and wrestling. He was an important part of the cross country team that brought home three consecutive League One championships, recorded two second place finishes in the county meets, and two second in the New York State Public High School Championship. But it was the sport of wrestling for which he earned his reputation as a mortarer for his toughness on the mat. He began his wrestling career in seventh grade as the Floyd's first eighth grader to compete on the varsity squad. He won several tournaments and flourished earning League One championships and the ultimate bronze in the Empire State Games with a third place finish. During his sophomore and junior years, he moved up in the weight class and finished fourth in the league both years. As a senior, he took home the League One champion, County Championship and finished fifth in the New York State Public High School Championship. He graduated from William Floyd with more wins than any wrestler that came before him. He attended Maryland University with the, on a wrestling scholarship and graduated in 1993 with a double major. After graduation, he worked as a stockbroker on Wall Street and parlayed that experience into a stint as a pharmaceutical sales representative. In 2001, he became a Suffolk County police officer and has since then achieved the rank of sergeant, currently serving in the 7th Precinct. In 2005, Matt started another amazing journey of his chapter of life when he married his love, Courtney, and together they have two healthy, beautiful children, Riley and Dylan. And now they're living competitively ever after. Congratulations, Matt.
So now it's on this index card that now I can't even read it. So, um, you did, right. But um, obviously, we got to thank uh, Mr. Mensch and uh, Kevin Coster and, and the entire staff that, that inducts us all and recognizes us for, for what we did um, as athletes here at the school. Um, I need to thank the amazing coaches. Can't say enough. <laughs> it's what I do. <laughs> Did he cry this much on the mat? Yeah. <laughs> now and then if now I talk about my family, I'll forget about it. But I, I got to thank my brothers and my mom and my dad who supported me tremendously. Uh, my sister, um, and uh, but again, you know. The greatest thing about this honor, probably, would be recognizing the coaches and and what they did for us. I mean, Coach Nolan, um, such a such a, a tremendous part of my life. I remember him and, and Labianca telling me, "Listen, athletes don't drink and athletes don't smoke." <laughs> That's right. He never had alcohol. Ever. Still, and and I I don't smoke and whatever and uh and I mean I just I I, I just listen. That's it. That that's all I did. And because I listened to them, I won. Uh, you know some matches that I you know. And, uh, I I got a, a, an incredible compliment from uh, from uh, Kevin earlier in saying that and 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 that's a, a bigger thing. It's it's one of those you know he talked about the ethos and. These tenets that Labo had, and, and just all, all our coaches, things that they told us, um, you know, you have to give back to the sport. So, like from 95 to 2000, Coach Phelan was gracious enough to let me back in the room and, and spend time. And, and, and I forged this relationship with Jeff Forsyth and, and taught him all my tricks. And uh, so, so that, there, now I got to get that perspective of being the coach, which was now, you know, I taught him that, you know, and I, he, wow, he said, and I, no, no, you know, and, and, and Coach Phelan's thing as a coach was funny that, he, you know, you would, in, unless you were in the room with him and part of the team, you, you didn't know what he was saying, suction, <laughs> incision, you know, <laughs> tight, 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 get in there, you know, and it was almost like, uh, you know, he was, like uh, giving a dictation on, on on surgery or something like that, you know, you didn't know. It, but but we knew, we knew what he was saying. And then Coach Nolan, he, he just he was that that leader, that coach that that you know. You talk about the Lombardis and, and you know, and, or, or coaches that had that impression on you in La Bianca, um, but he was able to um, make us believe. That, that we could win, and, and I have this group of guys here, I mean, this is 30 years ago almost, you know what I mean? And I have so many friends here that came from California, from the city, and from, from here, and it's it just, I mean, the fact that, that they came, because they're part of this, and, and, and although wrestling is an individual sport, it, this team, I, I can't even, coach, the, the, the bottle this moment speech, how about that? <laughs> Can I see? Lab to, I mean, Coach Nolan, we, for the first time, we won a league championship as a team. And I was in eighth grade. Uh, you know, these guys had hair on their chest, and, you know, it was crazy. And, and it, but, but I was, I, I was on the varsity team, and, and Coach Nolan, you think it's just a bunch of guys wrestling one another or whatever, but he's a strategist. He's got to put this together to, to try to get his team to win. You know, yeah, sure, I, I want to win my weight. He wants to win his weight, but he's, he's the coach. He's got to get this team together. So he takes one of the senior guys who thinks he's got to wrestle, and then he takes Mark Cortez and puts him in there because he knows that just with the scoring system, Mark is like a rubber band, and he's, he's not going to he's not gonna get pinned. He's not going to give up that extra point, and we won by that point. Mm. Mark, easy, Mark. You didn't win us, you didn't win us the match. But... But you know, and 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 it's that thing. If if I had the the the, the fearlessness of, of Grasso, this guy, we could 
remember a match that, you know, he, he was wrestling a state champion. This guy was incredible. And, but there's a little belief that Tom could have beat this guy. And it, it, now you're in the match, and then you see the most beautiful throw in the world. It was like, you didn't even hear it. But it was Tom getting thrown <laughs> and by this guy. But, it, but we believed that he could win. And then Colin, the same thing. If I had the strength of him or, or, or Wisty, you know, he, he was part of my inspiration. He, he pushed me back down the hallway in fifth grade. He knocked me from behind like a bully. And then I said, I got to wrestle. You know, to defeat this guy. I'm kidding. He did beat that. No, um, but you, you had so many, so many guys. Um, Brian Valentin was my partner, and uh, you know, it's in fourth grade. You know, <laughs> I mean, um, he he, and, and and we're police officers together. It's it's incredible, you know, since fourth grade, and and, and we're still we're still buddies because of the sport. Um, I have Mike Kellerman, who's a who's a, a, a teacher here, who. You know, then after college, it's like you just can't wrestle people on the lawn. You know, this gets a little weird. You can't wrestle people in the office. So then we got into cycling, another competitive uh, sort of individual sport, I guess. But um, uh, then, then there was Mecca. You know, when 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 Coach Phelan, uh, Coach Nolan left us. I hate to say it that way, but he did. He went up, moved to a different school district, and then we had uh, Phelan and Mecca, and and now. Coach Mecca, who's still here, and, and, and now all these, these guys are all in the Hall of Fame, these coaches, for the right reasons. I mean, they, they to, the time they took away from their families that, that they gave us, and they, what they instilled upon us, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's incredible. And, and I, I wrote down a few of those things um, from that eight pages, uh, single spaced. Um, <laughs> You know, you never know. You never know what you're capable of, capable, capable of until you try it. And and I could hear Coach Nolan saying that. You know, um, pay attention. Very simple one. Uh, stay positive and focused. And and like I just talked about a little bit before, it's it's just great to give back. From when I when I was able to give back to the sport and and have uh, an effect on a lot of those guys. Um, the Barones and everybody else. Um, and uh, expect the unexpected. And, you know, just that most importantly to have, this is a lava thing, to have some good friends, you gotta, you gotta be a good friend. So, that's, um, that was it. I mean, um, uh, bottom line, real applause goes to the coaches. It always should, and uh, I thank them very much for getting me here. And congrats to the to the girls uh, cross country team that that uh, Coach Nolan convinced me to quit football after a ninth grade MVP. Guys. Ninth grade, I got I got the plaque. Mike saw it. Um, and uh, Thomas Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I've taken some of those. I was talking about about limb bets. You know, I'd be at a bar and whenever and. And they'd be like, Camille, I own that's all the name I ever heard when I was at Limbets. Camille on this, Camille on that. And I was like, I had three, two brothers, so there was three. But I didn't say that part, that, you know. So I was getting the accolades for that. Um, but my my brother Andy should be in the Hall of Fame for his own right. He, I mean, I beat guys in tights. He he beat cancer. Tom too. He said, "You're the only William Floyd captain, captain of the Suffolk County Police Department. Yeah. Yeah. The highest rank." <laughs> so, so now the next level to become chief. It, it, now it's all political. So if Kate's still here, <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you very much, guys, and uh, congratulations to everybody. <laughs>
before our uh, before I bring up our uh, our last uh, inductee that we're going to talk with today, uh, I just really want to get a you know special recognition uh, the Board of Education here at William Floyd to understand you're going to get when you get to walk around school later on, uh, you're going to see what they've been working on for better part of 25 years uh, to make this. This really is the gem. It's the pride of the community, the William Floyd High School, and the other schools around us. The athletic department, the music department, theater department, CTE program. Uh, it doesn't happen. It, this, this not, it doesn't happen if you don't have people. And it, it, there are volunteers, our Board of Education, and great ones that have come and gone. Uh, we have a great one now. And I got to tell you, you know, they'll, they'll be the first to tell you, I drive them nuts. They really, they're like, you got to be kidding. You're not, you know, he goes mention again, you know. So, but you, because you need people like them. I'm pushing the envelope. And they're finding ways for me to get it done. And that's why we're winning. That's why we're successful in a lot of areas, not just athletics. So to the Board of Education, you have so many guys here tonight. And, and ladies, thank you so much again. Really. Which, which leads me to the next, the next inductee. And, and this was a special category. So I had to get this approved um, by the superintendent and by... Um, the Board of Education, uh, because it's outside of the box thinking again. We talk about pushing the envelope, but we have somebody who really defines being a fan, and 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 someone who you know, in those when you look at a fan, they're the ones that they they can quote, "No, that was 1992. No, that wasn't Rob Tiani. No, he didn't do that." And it, you know, you have the guy who knows the ins and outs, comes to every game, comes to the tournaments. Um, drives me nuts. Um, but, you know, we have a football game at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm picking him up at the train station at 6.30, and he's helping me setting up the stadium. And he is just a Floyd fanatic, and that's what Jonathan is. Uh, it's certainly an honor for him that I know he's going to hold dear for the rest of his life. Uh, and he's earned it, because in good times and in bad, um, and many times I'm trying to hold him back. He wants to, that official robbed us, and we, that was a bad call. Okay, Jonathan, I got it. I'm, oh, you got to call Section 11. I'm going to call him on Monday. I'll take care of it. But that's what Jonathan does because he loves William Floyd. So without further ado, our number one fan, Jonathan Gunston. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. My mom and dad can't be here because they won't show up. Um, and thank you my, for my uncle, Doug, and my aunt had being in here. And the one for the football team. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the soccer champion championship.
So we're going to give you guys uh, about 15 minutes so you can still relax, enjoy, get some coffee, uh, and then I'll, I'll get the group together. If you want to come up for photos, please do. Uh, we're going to get one big group photo with everybody. All the inductees, come on up. Hang out for a while, and then we'll do it yeah, again. And then we'll do the... Uh, yep. Yep. Thank you. All right, Hall of Famers.